Jane Sun was morning blend. Thanks to Midwest Bank Center, we're doing a series on the economic impact and inclusiveness of the African American community in St. Louis. And today, my guest is Chris Preymeyer with Beyond Housing. How are you doing, Chris? I'm great, James. Great, great to see you again. Great seeing you again, Chris. Tell us just a little bit about Beyond Housing. What you guys do? Yeah, James, Beyond Housing is a comprehensive community uh, building organization whose mission is to strengthen families and transform communities to create a stronger, more equitable and prosperous St. Louis once and for all. And we do that by delivering a comprehensive place-based uh, strategy um, in the boundaries of the Normie Schools Collaborative in the entering suburbs here in North St. Louis County, driven by the voice of this community, which means we're building housing, rehabbing housing. Um, we built known a grocery store, a movie theater, senior buildings, a health facility. We just opened up a mixed use facility on the corner of Page and Ferguson, where there's a food hall and a pub and a clothing boutique and a fitness center. Uh, we have staff embedded inside the Normandy schools. We run an after school program. We have community health workers on staff. We work closely with the mayor. So again, we're trying to address all the things that make up a thriving community, again, driven by the voice of the people that live here. Your key focus, is it more on housing or services or both? Yes. <laughs> it's, all, it's all of it, James. It's Again, all inclusive. <laughs> it's, look, if, 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 look, we, look we, we have to understand a, as a region um, that we're all connected together, right? And we're only going to prosper and progress so far if we keep leaving so many behind. So the challenges that, 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 that uh, communities face aren't singular in nature, right? It's not just, oh, we fix a few housing units or build a few homes and then magically everything else is better. Or it's not simply you provide um, a few programmatic elements to help families um, or, you know, bring a grocery store to a community. Those are all good things to do. But if that is all that you do, it is not sufficient um, to turn a place around, to have uh, a change in community level outcome. So uh, from our vantage point, everything that we see and know what our 20 plus year history of doing this work says is it is all the most important. And if you don't do it all together, intentionally integrated, places that have struggled with institutional racism for generations will not turn around unless you have the kind of investments in all those spaces. So, um, you know, again, we, 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 we refuse to say one is more important because if you don't do all of them, you're not going to succeed. Which leads to our question that we want to present to you. Is housing a challenge to inclusion or an opportunity? Um, and the answer is yes, right? To both, it, 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 as of today, it is both, right? It clearly is an opportunity, right? Um, you know, families build wealth by and large in this country um, through buying a home, that the biggest uh, part of their asset worth is, is the home that they buy and, and that they live in. Um, the challenge becomes um, from, from a, again, from a, a, an African-American perspective, uh, historical racism has, has left them way behind the game, um, both in income and opportunities of, of where folks can buy, where folks can live. Um, you know, again, the great book by Richard Rothstein called The Color of Law um, really spells out, again, what institutional and historical racism has done from a housing perspective um, all across this country uh, to people of color. So where we're at in St. Louis today is interest rates are great, opportunities to buy um, are, are, are there. Um, the challenge becomes, again, um, for, uh, for, for people of color, what kind of opportunities do you have from a credit, stores, credit score standpoint, from a, a, an income standpoint, and, and where do you want to live? Um, so uh, great opportunities. We've seen, you know, again, interest rates have remained low for a long, long time. So again, if you're interested in becoming a homeowner um, and you have some income and you have um, a decent credit score, you can, you can become a homeowner. That is certainly possible. Now, what we do know is also true in the marketplace is um, folks have no idea if their credit score is good or bad. Some people, some people think it's a whole lot better than it is, and some people think it's a whole lot worse than it really is, right? So again, information um, is critical, understanding where you're at today, getting the right advice. Too often in this space, we talk about education and counseling. I mean, as if, you know, folks that we serve aren't educated or have some medical problem that need to be counseled versus people with money get advisors. Right. So, you know, why shouldn't why shouldn't again the, the people in our communities get advisors as well? Our role is to advise folks. Boy, you know what? You're ready. Your credit score is great. Your income is great. You know, you're you're, you're ready to roll. Or you got some work to do. You know, you got, you got to work on your credit. You got you got to, you got to pay off some of these bills, and um and uh, and and then we'll be able to get you in that space where where you can become a homeowner. So, 
again, um, there has been there has been progress um, moving forward. Quite frankly, still a whole lot more to do. Um, uh, a lot, a lot more challenges to face, but again, things are better than they used to be, but nowhere near as good as they should be. Chris, thanks again for joining us on Morning Blend. Thanks, James. Take care now.